Happy Friday. My name is Danielle and I'm the VP of Options and I'm going to be walking you through an Options 101 session today. I'm going to be talking just briefly about a few different options trades that we really like to do here at Simpler Trading and then I'm also going to be talking about our favorite setup which is called the squeeze. So all of these concepts go hand in hand because essentially the primary focus of directional trading here at Simpler is this. What we do is we do a combination of technical analysis combined with some fundamental analysis, some overall top-down sector analysis. And what we do is we look to identify setups on specific charts that we can trade. Now, those setups are most of the time directional in nature, which means that we are looking for a ticker to go from point A to point B. Now, what we need to have in order to identify if a ticker is going to go from point A to point B is going to be something called a setup. A setup is going to be a combination of factors that tells us that there's a higher probability of one thing happening over the other. And our favorite setup is known as the squeeze. So I'm going to point over here to this NASDAQ chart just for a minute because this is usually the, the number one place that we start. Anytime we're looking for a directional move in a specific stock or um, a specific sector in the market, it's always a good idea to start off with the indexes because we want to know which direction we think the indexes are going to go because usually more often than not, most stocks are going to go in the same direction as that index. Now, as you can see, this chart pattern uh, has been a little bit wild this year especially you know we've got some up moves we've got some down moves uh, most recently we've had just a few days of upwards price action in a row but generally what happens after you have a big move is that the market is going to consolidate so what we are always looking for is we are looking for consolidation because it's when the market consolidates that it builds up energy, okay? So our goal here at Simpler Trading is always to identify when this consolidation is happening, which means you're not in the middle of a big move, okay? So let's say you have a big move like that, but then afterwards price just kind of hangs out and does a whole lot of nothing. This is kind of like the golden moment in time that we're looking to identify because we want to get in before the next big move happens. So the signal that we use for that, in addition to some technical analysis on the actual chart itself, is going to be this signal right down here, which is going to be the squeeze. Now there's two different versions of the squeeze. The one that I have on my chart is called the Squeeze Pro. It has a couple additional signals, but there is also a free squeeze in Thinkorswim. So if you're wanting to add that to your charts, all you have to do is right click on your charts, studies, and edit studies. And then you just go right up to this box right here and you type in squeeze. It helps if you spell it right. So do you see right here how you have the TTM squeeze? You can just go ahead and add that to your charts. And at that point, that is where you are going to um, be able to use that free squeeze. So let me see if I can just get these right next to each other. TTM squeeze. There we go. All right. So at this juncture, what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have the free squeeze and then I'm going to have the uh, simpler trading squeeze just because I wanted to show you that, you know, there are two different options if you want the free one. I use the free one for a really long time. It's a great tool. 
and uh, you can definitely just use that one. So what you're looking for on the squeeze is you're looking for primarily these red dots, okay? So do you see moments in time? You see a bunch of red dots right here. The Squeeze Pro is going to have some white dots as well. See a bunch of red dots right here, red dots right here, red dots right here, red dots right here, red dots right here. Those are the key and pivotal moments in time in which the market is in consolidation. Okay? Because what we want to avoid is we want to avoid trying to get in after half of the move has already happened, okay? We want to get in before the move actually takes off. So the way to do that is by using the squeeze. So when you look at the squeeze right here and you say, okay, these were the moments in time where we had consolidation in the market. What ended up happening after that? All right, well, you have this moment right here massive breakout, right? You have this moment right here, break down. You have this moment right here, break out. And then this one was arguably, you know, the biggest one, which was right here, this major breakdown. So as you can see, there's not a, you know, squeeze for every single move. The squeeze happens when the market's been consolidating for a little while, it's usually during the moment in time where everybody's bored and you're, you know, looking around and you're trying to figure out, you know, what can I trade? Nothing is really happening. That is usually when the squeezes are forming. So you might think to yourself that there's nothing really going on in the market, but the um, erroneous thinking in that is that, yes, there is something going on what's going on is that the market is building up energy and it's about to take off. Now, if you only trade, you know, these like big moves, I mean, I personally think that's plenty, but the thing about us traders is that we're always looking for a trade, right? That's why it's important to recognize this signal and use it across a variety of charts. Because for example, in the NASDAQ, we've had, you know, what, four major squeezes this year. We had this one, the huge downdraft at the beginning of the year. Uh, we had a short squeeze rally that ripped from the lows up into the March highs. Uh, then we had another pretty big move. After that, we had a move from the uh, May highs down to the June lows. Then we had a massive short squeeze from uh, June all the way up into July. So those have been the biggest moves. Now you might say, well, what about all the other moves? Well, that's when you can go and look at a different chart to trade because if you are using a variety of different charts, what you can do is you can look for squeezes on different charts at different times. So for example, this one's the S&P futures. Um, on the S&P futures, we didn't have as many squeezes, but we had a major one right here, which was at the end of March that ended up with this big move right there. We had another one at the end of uh, June, or sorry, the end of May. Then we had another one right here um, from July into August. Now, once you learn how to um, identify and trade the squeeze, what you can do is you can look at all kinds of charts and all kinds of stocks as well. So you can, for example, just look at the tech sector. Now the tech sector is definitely going to be, um, you know, somewhat in line with the NASDAQ. So it may not be that much different. So for example, you have a major squeeze here, big move here, squeeze here, big move here. <laughs> But if you look at a couple of the other sectors that may not, you know, move in lockstep with the NASDAQ, such as, for example, consumer discretionary, you might find that there's squeezes in other locations. So here again was another big signal 
at the end of July going into August in consumer discretionary. You might find yourself looking at some energy stocks. So for example, if we go over to XLE, this is going to be the um, energy ETF. Uh, you might find some additional signals in here that you know you could have traded if you're not into tech stocks. Um, so for example, energy has had many, many, many signals this year. Um, and it's consolidating into another one right now. So as you can see right here, you only have two dots of the um, squeeze that are consolidating. Normally it's gonna consolidate for at least a week. Sometimes it could be a lot longer. Sometimes it'll consolidate for even a couple months. When you're in one of those moments in time where the squeeze is consolidating for more than three weeks, that's usually when it has a huge breakout move. So as you can see right here, this squeeze lasted all the way from November um, into the beginning of 2022. And you see how energy, I mean, during that time, you know, nobody's paying attention, super boring, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, when you get those red and white dots that shift to green, what that means is that the squeeze has now fired. The consolidation has broken out. The chart is on the move. All of that energy that was built up in this time frame is now taking off. Now, this was just a you know massive move right here. And within this big move, there's other smaller moves too. So for example, you know, this traded higher for three months, pulled back for a few days when it had another squeeze, gave you another entry. Okay, traded higher again for another couple of weeks. And then we got another pullback with another squeeze and then it traded higher. And then of course we had this big move but even then, after that big move, you know, it, it went up, came down, consolidated again in another squeeze, and then took off. Pulled back, consolidated again in another squeeze, and it took off. So the moral of the story is, is that you can use a signal across really any chart. Um, you can use it on any time frame. The time frame that I'm looking at right now is going to be the daily charts, primarily because I'm a swing trader. So I like to be in trades for, you know, usually two, three, four weeks at a time. So I'm generally looking for this signal on the daily chart. However, if you like to trade lower time frames, you can absolutely go down to, you know, 15 minute chart, 30 minute chart um anything like that and you can look for that same signal on on any of these time frames the difference is going to be how long it lasts so the squeeze is usually going to last about eight to ten bars on average okay there's going to be obviously some smaller moves there's going to be some bigger moves um but eight to 10 bars on average, okay? So if you are looking at that signal on a daily chart, that means that when it breaks out, it could last eight to 10 days of upwards price action, okay? If you're using that same signal on a 30 minute chart, then you know, you're looking at maybe one day, maybe two trading days because you have to see, you know, eight to 10 bars after it breaks out, 30 minutes for each bar, and that's how you're gonna calculate it. So if you're trading a squeeze on a daily chart, you need to have a much higher price target than you would if you are just trading it for, you know, one or two days. So that is what's gonna make, you know, a big part of the difference there. Now, when you're looking across the market and you're looking for squeezes, I mean, you can find them with scans. That's normally a pretty good way to find them. A lot of the time I will just find them by accident. Um, so, you know, I'll be just doing my research or a member will ask me to look at a specific chart 
and I'll look at it and I'll say, wow, there's a, there's a great squeeze right there. And in phase energy is one of the ones that I think a lot of us are trading right now in the trading room because this one had a really nice daily squeeze on the daily chart. You know, it's nice when, um, the ticker is for the most part trending in one direction. I think one of the most common questions is going to be, well, how do you know which direction the squeeze is going to break out when it fires? Um, so you don't ever know 100% for sure. The majority of the time, the squeeze is going to go in the direction of the trend. Okay. So if you're, you know, if the chart time frame you're looking at is trending to the upside when the chart pulls back and it goes into this consolidation into the squeeze then it's more often than not going to go higher yes you are going to get some squeezes that are just kind of the ones that are a little bit of a pain in the butt and they fire the opposite direction and that happens and that's trading but for the most part we look at them to go in the direction of the trend that is why Primarily, we like to um, focus on charts that have a decent trend because it makes it easier to select the squeezes that are going to work. If you're looking at a chart that is just all over the place and it's up and it's down and it's up and it's down, it, it makes it a lot more difficult. So especially if you are new to the squeeze, I highly recommend only sticking with charts that are going with the trend because it's going to make your life a lot easier. It doesn't matter if it's up or down, just go with the flow. So in phase energy is one um, that we like here because it has this squeeze. Um, yesterday, well, yesterday and the day before, it did actually have a really nice breakout and it actually already met my targets once. But as you can see today, it's pulling back again. It's down 4.62%. But on this pullback, it's only pulled back to the mean. It's pulled back to the 8 EMA. It's uh, pretty nominal overall as far as a move is concerned. So I still do like this one for continued upside. Here's another example of another squeeze that I saw that was setting up right now. Um, this is in T-Mobile. Now, the reason why I like this one is because T-Mobile is or at least in the recent past has been in a trend now i know with the volatility in the market this year um it's a little bit you know challenging to say well is it in a bullish trend is it not because i mean if you look at this chart pattern obviously you can see that t-mobile had a very rough time um all the way from july of 2021 to January of 2022. During this time frame, it was absolutely in a downtrend. The way that you can tell is, I mean, for me, I have color-coded candles. These are called the Trend Strength Turbo Candles. You can see that the candles are all red. Um, you can see that the moving averages are up above the candles. So every time price tries to make it through it cannot do it um so those are the main you know components of the trend where you have where you have the red candles you have price underneath the moving averages every time it rallies it fades again so during this time frame you can see how there's a squeeze right here squeeze goes down squeeze right here goes down squeeze right here goes down squeeze right here goes down so those squeezes were taking the ticker in the direction of the trend which was down then what happens was what happened was the trend shifted so i mean at some point you're gonna have some trend shifts right so up at this juncture you can see the candles break from being red they shift from red to yellow and all of a sudden they're bright green Okay, you can also see that the candles are now not below the moving averages, but they're actually above the moving averages. So that is the point where this chart shifted from a bearish to a bullish trend. Okay, now when you are looking at the squeezes 
and what happened after the trend shift occurred. From that point, you see how there's a squeeze here, squeeze here, squeeze here, squeeze here. So do you see how from that point when the squeeze is fired, they actually went in the direction of the new trend, which was up. So you see how right now it's in a squeeze, right? You have red dots. It hasn't fired yet. You know when it fires because it turns uh, green. Um, that means that this is a setup. It's a tradable setup. You can trade it right now. Uh, it hasn't taken off yet. In a few days, people are probably going to be like, T-Mobile made a, you know, traded up to 150 or whatever the case may be. So normally, and that's actually exactly where the target is, because I personally use uh, Fibonacci levels to determine price targets. So when I uh, put a Fibonacci projection on here, it's going to give me the target up at about 150. So um, that is what I would personally use as a price target. Now, I would have to do another full session on Fibonacci because it's a little bit of a complex concept but when you actually get it down it really doesn't take very long at all but the moral of the story is is that when you have a setup a directional setup you need to have a method in which you can determine where you think the price is going to go because you can't just say oh i have a squeeze and a trend but you know i have no idea what i'm targeting because in options trading you need to have a decent idea of where you think the price is going to go because that is how you are going to set up an options trade. So for example, with T-Mobile, um, I'm just gonna draw my level right on there. You can also use just key psychological values. I mean, you know, 150 is definitely the next key psychological value. And sometimes when you go to the options chain, it'll give you a little bit of a hint as well, because when you go to the options chain, what that is going to help you do is it's going to help you determine a price target within a reasonable time frame. So when I look at T-Mobile, for example, you can see within the options chain that T-Mobile is trading at $146. Okay. Um, these are going to be the different weekly series. The ones that are in white are going to be the primary monthly series. These ones are generally going to have a lot more volume in those series. It depends on the stock. Some of the major large cap stocks, um, it's not really going to make that much of a difference if you're using a monthly or a weekly series. For example, you know, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, those stocks have such high volume that it is no problem at all using the weekly series. However, a lot of stocks out there, they're just not going to have enough options activity to actually use a weekly series. So that's why it's important to pay attention um, if you're looking at a weekly or a monthly series. But as you can see, the weekly series are labeled very clearly. So when you're looking through the options chain and you're trying to uh, discover what you should do here, and you're trying to say, okay, well, I think T-Mobile is probably going to go higher because it has a squeeze. Um, the squeeze is consolidating in a bullish trend. Uh, I think it's going to go higher, but I'm not really sure how high, and I'm not really sure during what time frame. Well, that is where you look at your options chain to check out these numbers over here, which is going to be um, the market maker expected moves. Okay. So these are the numbers that the market makers use to price options. They're not always going to be 100% accurate. It's just giving you a range. Okay. So normally with a squeeze, what it means is that the stock is going to move more than expected. The squeeze is kind of the, um, power that the squeeze is the power behind the stock that will cause it to move more than the expected move. So if you know that there's a big squeeze setting up, then you want to take that into consideration when you're looking at your time frames. So for example, 
We're trading at 146. We know there's a squeeze. We know that our target is going to be about 150. So by looking at the options chain, when do you think T-Mobile could be at 150? Now, keep in mind that when it says plus or minus $4.30, that doesn't mean it's just going to go, you know, 146 directly up $4.31. Okay, it could go up, it could go down, and then it could go up like that. So you have to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room um, because stocks never go straight up or straight down. So if I was going to target 150, I would say reasonably I could try to do it by September 16th. Or if I wanted to give myself a little bit more wiggle room, I could do it by September 14th or September 21st. Because this is saying that it has a $6.43 expected move by then. Or it's saying that it has a $7.73 expected move by then. Okay. Now, we really don't have a ton of time to get into, you know, a variety of option strategies to use as far as, you know, how you would actually target 150. That's going to have to be a um, separate options 101 session. But just to briefly go over these, and like I said, I would be happy to cover this in a session um I don't know, upcoming later this month at some point. But basically what you would want to do is you'd want to look through your options chain and you would want to start thinking about in your mind how you could possibly make money off of T-Mobile going to $150. Now, the most easy option would be just buy the stock, right? Buy the stock. You don't have to worry about when your options expire. You don't have to worry about strikes. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just buy the stock and you just wait for your price target. Of course, with a stop. Now, I should probably go over that as well. Normally, I have my stop below the recent low, which is going to be right at 140. So if you have your stop, let's say 139.50 and your target at 150, uh, that is, I will say, a little bit of a wide stop with a little bit wider of a risk reward than I would prefer, which is why in a perfect world, I would rather get in on a pullback, which would be really right around the middle of the zone, like 143.50, because see, then that way, you're halfway in between your target and your stop point instead of being closer to your target and further away from your stop. If you are so far from your stop, um, that just means that you have a wider stop. And if you're wrong, you're going to lose more money than if you're right. So with this setup in particular, even though everything's lining up and it looks pretty good, just keep in mind, I would prefer an entry around 143.50, 144, because it's a little bit of an aggressive entry right here. Now, if you're looking at your options change to try to determine what kind of options contract you could buy as a general rule when you're trading a daily squeeze with a long call you want to give yourself as much time as you can just keep in mind it's going to cost more money if you give yourself more time so for example if you're looking at the series seven days out and we normally like to go with the delta 60 or delta 70 call that's going to cost you between $2.63 and $3.30. Not bad, right? Um, but if you give yourself a little bit more wiggle room, which again is what I would prefer, go for that same Delta 60, that same Delta 70. Then at that juncture, you're paying $4.80 to $6.20. So you're paying, you know, almost double to give yourself two more weeks. In that situation, um, I personally would always prefer to give myself more time because you know why? You never know when the squeeze is actually going to fire. And the death of options is when you run out of time. So even though T-Mobile looks great right now, you know, maybe for the next week it's going to sit here and do absolutely nothing. 
That's why when you're buying a long call, you want to give yourself the gift of time. All right, so I think I covered, you know, primarily, you know, the squeeze, how to identify the squeeze, why we use the squeeze. We got a little bit into how we would actually trade it with options as well, but we're going to have to go into that a little bit more deeply during the next Options 101 session. So uh, if you want to stay tuned to our schedule in the free trading room as far as when is the next Options 101 schedule will be, that will be amazing. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can learn more there as well. My handle is going to be Trader Danielle, T R A D E R, T R A D E R D A N I E L L E. Make sure you um, spell it right because there's lots of people pretending to be me out there. Uh, but other than that, this has been great. If you have any additional questions, please let me know through that venue. And other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next session to dive more into options.